So let's continue a little bit and talk a little bit more about my story, what happened, how it happened, and uh, what it was like after I migrated. Well, as I've said, my father had an extreme Christian ideology, and uh, as a consequence, he demanded absolute perfection from me, anything less, and uh, it would evoke extreme rage in him. He saw me as the emblem of uh, the failure that he had uh, met with as a soldier in the Rhodesian War, somebody who had fought for ideals that um, had been on the losing end of those ideals. And uh, he saw me as the externalization of these uh, lost ideals, the humiliation that came about through having lost that war. And uh, he, being a Rhodesian male, could not uh, stand a public blight on his image. But a female is different. A female is something other. Female is not one who meets that gold standard of uh, Christianity. And so I was the one that uh, uh, became that, uh, that sense of humiliation for him, that sense of degradation, that sense of uh, things having gone radically wrong. In fact, that sense of God's condemnation of his own imperfection and God's humiliation of him and God's degradation of a loser in a war. But uh, he couldn't take that on by himself, so I became the one that had to wear that uh, emblem, had to wear that sign, that stigma of degradation, and enable him, therefore, and thereby to cope with what uh, was otherwise impossible for him to handle because if you fought a war for great ideals, for wonderful values, and then God or fate turns its back on you, then uh, the degree of disappointment is great, but the degree of humiliation and shame is even greater. My father couldn't wear that. I had to. I had to be the one who, uh, who carried that for him. I was... Uh, a child at the time, I was 15, and uh, I didn't know anything about the new world I had moved into, but uh, people obviously assumed I did because they gave me very short thrift if I asked them how things worked and what I was supposed to do and what the meaning of uh, the current existence was. So I quickly learned not to ask them that, but to try to discover it indirectly for myself through trial and error. But uh, I had very, very little room to play with because I uh, had been beaten down so much by my father that uh, I, um, I was quite sick. I was quite sickly. My physical and physiological energies were low indeed. And if I was able to screw them up into a ball and throw them at a particular target, uh, I tried to do so to redeem myself to try to gain a sense of uh, what I had also lost through uh, my father's uh, punishment and humiliation of me. I had to earn back something, and I truly believed that I had to earn it back from society. I had to gain approval, because otherwise I would continue to be punished. And... Um, Unfortunately, everything I tried failed because when you are just a child and uh, your parents are leaning on you to be utterly perfect or else you're going to be punished, uh, there is not enough energy, there's not enough emotional maturity and there's not enough knowledge and there's no support. In fact, there's negative support. There's support in the sense of uh, we will... Um, uh, make you see the error of your ways if you happen to fail. And even a small stumble, a small hurdle, is enough to evoke extreme wrath and punishment from one's parents. So there's no room for failure. 
and uh, and yet there was constant failure because I hadn't uh, been given any emotional support, no material, not really material support either. We didn't, we couldn't afford it. Uh, no nourishment. Uh, you're in a new country, and uh, you're supposed to uh, lead the way for your parents and teach them what the ropes are because they're unconsciously leaning on you for that and getting angry when you're not doing it. And uh, there's, there's no resources for you to do it. You're going to fail. And when you do fail, then the boot comes down all the more heavily. Why did you fail? My father sought as God's condemnation of me for nonconformity. But I'd never been given the tools to conform in the first instance. I'd never, despite my huge efforts in trying, uh, been given enough knowledge, enough emotional backup, enough moral support, uh, enough assistance of any any sort whatsoever to be able to succeed. And uh, so I kept getting the boot in me, no room for even the slightest imperfection. But uh, the kind of support I got was inverse or negative. It was acknowledgement of the stumbles I made over the small uh, hurdles trying to escape, trying to establish myself in life and punishment for uh, imperfections but never ever support for something I had halfway succeeded in. Uh, that was not forthcoming. And people around me would not see or accept that I was in very dire straits, that I was uh, in a state of um, extreme uh, existential danger, because to them it was easy. They knew the environment, they knew the people, they were well adjusted to it, they had lived there all their lives. So what was I asking questions about? What was I making a fuss about? when to them it was all so easy. So I learnt not to ask them. I learnt, uh, I learnt to try to get around it somehow, to bide my time. Uh, in a way I learnt to try to understand what their fantasy was, what their conception was, and try somehow to imagine a way that I would align my real existence with their fantasy. But I could never quite latch on to their fantasy. It made no sense to me. And uh, my, my overall impression was that people were simply crazy, that they had crazy views and that they overreacted to me. And uh, they um, constantly demanded that I conform, but constantly denied me the means to do so. It was very stressful. It was very stressful, stressful because if I were to fail, I would be punished even for a slim failure. So I had no choice but to succeed, to gather very, very small amounts of energy and knowledge and capacity into a ball and throw it at my goals try to hit them, and know for sure that if I missed, the punishment would be redoubled or tripled, that I would have no way to escape. And not least, my own body was also punishing me, because uh, if I were to experience a negative emotion, such as sadness or anger or indeed rage, my body was physiologically no longer able to cope with such intense emotions. And I was not habituated to that. And uh, this would cause me to feel profound shame. I would attack myself aggressively just for feeling a negative emotion, for feeling that, uh, oh dear, I failed again. So for many, many years, it was very difficult for me to get myself from out under my parents' control. There are uh, very strong 
uh, guilt-ridden and shame-ridden rhetoric, which all had to do with uh, coping after having lost a war and feeling that if one, which is to say, if my parents were not uh, perfect in the public eye, that the real condemnation of uh, God against the Rhodesian people and the Rhodesian soldiers would be felt most acutely. I had to protect my parents from that. I was their fall girl, their, their whipping girl, their fall guy. I was the one who had to take the brunt of that because they couldn't. They were not strong enough to do it. I had to take the responsibility. I had to feel the shame. I had to be the shame. I had to feel and be the guilt that they uh, unconsciously felt but deflected onto me. So I've been the, uh, the scapegoat for a war that I didn't uh, choose. I was too young to have chosen. Politics that I didn't understand. Historical circumstances that I couldn't explain until recently. And nobody believed me because these situations, these circumstances are much too big really for anybody to grasp, but not least a 15-year-old child. <laughs> How could I have grasped them? How could I, how could I have understood them? But uh, those were the issues I was grappling with nonetheless. Those were the very real issues for me that I had to face and come to terms with. And that's why I wrote my book, uh, as a way to face them and come to terms with them, to understand fully what had uh, affected me so drastically, so painfully throughout my life.